Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Bastion. Uh, in the last video we took out Mount Zand and the Colford Cauldron, uh, picking up two shards and two weapons. We got the Fire Bellows and the Mortar. Uh, today we're going to continue collecting shards, but before we head to our next area I want to go ahead and grab something from the arsenal. Now the Mortar's pretty good, uh, not so much for the next stage, but I want to continue to show it off, so I'm going to leave it on. Uh, for our other weapon, I want to use something that I haven't used a lot of, so I'm going to go with the War Machete just for sake of variety. And for ability, I'm putting on Squirt Lure because it's useful for the next stage. And with this loadout, we can go ahead and start the next area. I'm pretty sure I'm going to switch out the mortar halfway through, but we'll see. Just a couple shards left. The quarry's got to have one, right? Right, so we know we're heading to a quarry, the Burstone Quarry to be exact, if I can find it. Here it is. Imagine everything you'd need to build a city like Ceylandia. It takes hard work and planning, and it also takes Burstone Quarry. This is where the materials that went into building the city and its walls were gathered. The Ura Tunnel beneath the quarry must have softened the road from the calamity. I wonder if the tunnels are doing so well. We bought the whole place from the Ura on the cheap. Same goes for its natives, Rattletails. We have a new enemy here, Rattletails. Uh, they'll burrow into the ground and make meteorites fall on you. Why would the Ura put up with those pests? Well, the Ura were actually able to tame them. Uh, Rattletails were under the control of the Ura. Rattletails ain't the worst of it either, but more about that in a little bit. You're gonna see a few friendly gas fellows throughout the stage. Killing them doesn't give you anything, I don't know why I thought it did. The quarry came with a lifetime supply of windbags. Windbags smaller than the naked eye can see are nesting in those rocks. But there was even more to it than that. Actually, on the note of those gas fellows, uh, we know that before the Calamity, gas fellows were responsible for construction of the city. The quarry ain't exactly up to safety standards no more. So. They were pro like these are probably leftover workers who have been here uh, before the calamity even occurred. Not only are these rocks a source of life, we found that the oldest ones remember things. He's talking about cores with that line. Uh, the rocks that have windbags nesting in them are cores, and they're recording the data of the land before it was undone. That's what cores are, right? They hold the memories of the world before the calamity. And from what I understand, shards are just pieces of cores that were like broken off or shattered. They were recording everything, all the time, taking it all in. Now normally when we take a shard from the wilds, the place will fall apart, but being that this place is pretty much made out of cores, I wonder if it will get destroyed once we take the shard. Now the friendly gas fellows here usually don't get off and help you. Uh, they need to be attacked first. I was just lucky that this guy was attacked by the pincushion. Also, because we were just talking about the wilds, this place doesn't really seem like an outskirt to me. Like, I know on the map it was around the edges and stuff, but I don't know. It seems pretty, uh, pretty well developed. Keeping the quarry free from pests turned out to be a problem. Rattletails kept tunneling in the snack on windbags. Something I should mention, because I actually didn't know this, when Rattletails are burrowed, you can actually attack them, like with a melee weapon. Just walk up to them and Even start swinging. Started taking root. Unfortunately, you can't attack stink guys until they wake up. Actually, that makes me wonder, if you drop a mortar shell on sleeping stink guys, does it hurt them? Without those windbags, the quarry might not have its special qualities. Now, why would the Ura sell off such a fascinating place? I somehow feel like we cheated them out of it. The Ura always were a superstitious lot. This branch up here that I come back to check on, um, you'll see that I decide to not go up there. All that's up there is a healing tonic and a few fragments. 
Now there's an arsenal here that I'm actually going to use to switch out the mortar. Uh, it's not good for what's coming up. I want a fast-paced weapon. Might be the gods told him the quarry's bad news. We're just going to put on the dueling pistols. They're the quickest range weapon we have. He might be asking why we need a faster range weapon. Well, you'll see. <laughs> I feel like we contributed to that. The just got too much sunshine for that wagon. There's gotta be more to it than that. You don't sell a place like this just for a little sunshine, no matter how much you hate the surface. Also, the second half of this place is kind of annoying without the mortar. The mortar's just really good for killing these pincushions and wallflowers, anything far away, right? So what I'd recommend doing is using the mortar until you get to the area that you need the dueling pistols for, and then go back and switch out. In any case, it's fair to say the quarry was a godsend. Yeah, but look at it now. In the long run, who really got the better deal? Then again, I doubt whatever we gave them in exchange is in good condition right now, so we'll call it even. Those rocks, all polished to a mirror sheen. There's actually an effect on some of them, I don't know if you've noticed, but when we walk by, uh, it kind of looks like rippling water. I don't care too much for the effect, but it is there. I'm not a fan of having to turn these switches on and off. It doesn't really add too much to the game. Uh, it just adds some artificial length. I mean, I know you have to be smart with them if you want to go down the extra branches and stuff, but it doesn't take too long to figure out. They might as well not be there. The largest ones, you know as cores. Hard times in the quarry these days. A single core could keep the lights on in an entire city district. I wouldn't doubt it, they're keeping entire regions alive during the Calamity. Big regions too, the cores were in the urban areas. And we saw the good it did to the Bastion. Kind of, uh, kind of amazing what some happy memories can do. Now this is a good example of an area where the mortar would be awesome. The smaller ones, we call them shards. We know all about those by now, don't we? You'll see I leave some stink eyes behind over there. Uh, there's nothing important over there, there's just a black tonic. The shard's got a fraction of a core's power, enough to fuel a voyage to the motherland. Or restore the monument, upgrade buildings at the bastion, or keep the wilds alive. In retrospect, killing those stink eyes might have been a good idea, considering how close we are to leveling. Also, take a look at this lunkhead, totally standing on air right there. Yes, I'm mad. Now, part of the reason I put Squirt Lure on for this stage was for the lunkheads. Um, it's not the best way of dealing with them, but, you know, they help. You could argue that trip mines are better, and you'd be right, but I didn't put the squirt lure on to only deal with the lunkheads. There's something coming up that the squirt lure really helps for, and there's something after the stage that the squirt lure is going to help us with. Well, now the quarry's all dried up. These rocks are much too young to be of use. I guess that answers our question from earlier. Looks like this place is going to crumble when we grab the shard. Remember how I said rattletails ain't the worst thing in the quarry? That honor goes to a beast we took to Colin, Sir Lunky. Massive things stomped many of our boys. We just couldn't get rid of him. The only thing harder than the rocks burst in the quarry is Sir Lunky's head. His big fat rums plenty tough too. And so is a kid. And you thought I hated lunkheads, get a load of this guy. Anyways, this is why you don't want the mortar. Uh, you need to be quick on your feet, because you have to dodge him and the meteorites from the rattletails. We never could get stubborn on Lunky to leave the bar. Then the kid hears a voice calling from down the hall. Are you alright? It says. It's him. I've come to warn you, he says. 
Luku finally decided to make an appearance. Let's finally find out why he left. The Bastion is under siege. Let it fall. You should not go back. Under siege from what? Kid hears him, but he ain't about to be deterred. If that's the way it is, he says, then I won't stop you. We're gonna call his bluff here. Because my countrymen will. So now it's pretty clear that we're under siege by him. Clearly whatever he found out about the Calamity is pretty damn serious and we probably should have found out by now. Say what you will about Zolf, but he's a man of his word. As you can see, the Bastion's been hit, and we have some Ura warriors here. His countrymen don't much care for pleasantries, though. Too bad for that. So I've showed him the way here, and here they came to take revenge. Obviously, this is in retaliation for what Zolf found out about the Calamity. They got inside the bastion and shut the door. The kids gotta go in through the back. I should have told them sooner about all this. To make matters worse, seems the Ura took the girl. So they've got Zia Tune, as we just found out when we picked up her harp. Unfortunately, they broke in, and they started digging their holes. Something wrong was sprung out of those holes, and it's eaten away in this place. We tried to stop them, but we needed help. Keep in mind that the pets here can die. They have a health bar, and if they do die, they won't be in the bastion afterwards. However, mementos that actually do things like the stock pot or the pipe, they can't be broken or anything. There goes our squirt that we picked up all the way back in the Workman Ward ages ago. At the time I thought this enemy was the last one, but there are actually a few hiding around that are really hard to find, so I spend the next little while looking. Eventually I find it behind the memorial, but I get myself stuck, and uh, the only way to kill him is with Squirt Lure, but it took a really long time. Eventually he did die, though. We find each other as the dust settles. Then I tell him why the Ura came. To get us back. For the Calamity. It was Ceylandia's master plan to wipe the Ura out. But part of that plan backfired, didn't it? If only Zolf knew the whole story. What were we to think? They must have got her. Taken her back to her rightful home. The shards can put this disease in remission, but there's only one cure. We need to finish what we started. The arsenal's complete, in case we need protection. 
Now all we need is one last shard. A lot has happened in this video. Obviously the Bastion was attacked and Zia was captured. Uh, we learned a little bit more about the Calamity and that it was uh, the result of a mishap with the plan to wipe out the Era. Though we don't know everything, we don't know why they still wanted to wipe out the Era, even when they were supposed to be at peace. Um, so hopefully we'll find out the whole story soon. Uh, that is where I'm going to cut things off for today. Uh, in the next video, we set out once again to get the last shard. I'll see you guys then.